This week on The Expanse, we are feeling the burn. We finally got to see the Rosanante do its thing, go full Star Fox, doing a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! What was his name? Peppy? Prippy? I think this week's episode has been the slowest we've ever had for this season, Um, but I think it shows what this show does so well. It can hit all the beats, the fast ones and the slow ones. We essentially had an emotional teleplay uh, this week, yeah, and um, you know, it's excellently done, and it's really setting up, I think, for a huge finale. Walking away is the only choice anyone it was a slower episode and i think the biggest thing that i noticed was this is the first week for this season that we've really only concentrated on two plot lines it really just cut away between you know naomi um and marco and philip and then you know holden if they rendezvous with anyone before we do and hand off the sample we'll never get it back that was it it was just those two plot lines and man it it, it was it was refreshing to, to just really concentrate in on on just a, a limited amount of characters and i know some other people have commented on that, that that they were hoping to maybe just get some episodes that were simpler um and really instead of bouncing around the whole galaxy and and this really did work before we get going please like subscribe leave please. comments complain praise let us know what you're thinking about the expanse i would like to give a special shout out to bobby with the best bit of humor yeah. in the episode just be like ah, eh, the bullet <clears throat> the hell's that a bullet dirt off the shoulder <laughs> she's just so cool now tuned into the greatest I love her and Alex. Uh, I'm I'm yeah. like, getting a, more sad as we're running out of time with Alex that I'm like, uh, right, right. God, I really do love the character. Philip. This episode, it, it culminated with this whole idea of who is going to win over, I'm just going to say Philip's soul. You know what I mean? This was really the episode where it came down to like, is mom going to convince him that he is being led astray or is dad going to keep his thumb over him? Because we know, we've seen who the real Marco is. You know, this is this is not somebody that you want probably raising a child. <laughs> I'm disappointed. We get where he's coming from, you know, that there has been suffering by the belt, but but he he really, he's, he's been showing his true colors and then showed them, especially in this episode where, you know, he just completely destroys his son's self-confidence in a real crucial moment so that he can control him more, you know? And, and so we see these things happening and, and Philip doesn't really fully know what's happening. But um, but by the end of the episode, it's it's what's done is done. You have no idea who I am. I was actually a little surprised. I thought Naomi got through to Philip a little bit more. It kind of goes back to like he's been conditioned and raised, so it's almost like exactly. Pavlovian, right? So when Marco yep. kind of calls him and says, "Don't." you're my son. Don't you want to be my heir and be known for this revolution? It's like, that's the, that's the, the cult juice right there that he's been drinking forever. So it's, he kind of falls right back into it. But I mean, his scene with Naomi, I thought that was so powerful and I really thought it was was a breakthrough. And even when Marco was kind of like putting him on the spot, right. And giving, getting everyone to cheer for him and all that. I felt like he even looked at his dad, like, ah, that's mom kind of said you were going to make it about you i actually work on this stars documentary all about kind of cult stuff um somewhat recently and it's crazy that it's so difficult to pull somebody out once they're already in and clearly philip is in like he he's been set up to just crave his dad's approval to such a degree that I don't think I don't know if there's anything that could break him out in in that kind of simple way that it, he would have to get him away from his dad for such a longer period of time to actually you know really really get through to him and clearly that that scenario is not 
not happening anytime soon. No, but but it's it shows that he clearly does want something different. Like there, he feels yeah. like what his mom is talking about. That sounds like a better future. That sounds like a better life. And this is honestly a sad episode in a lot of ways. Um, and we'll kind of get to that ending. Like I felt it too. That we're like, oh, maybe maybe Naomi can break through to him because he didn't know the full truth mm-hmm. of why his mom wasn't in his life. And now instead of being about his mom abandoning him, now it's about his mom is, is going to make him, you know, a weaker man. And, you know, he needs to be the man that his, that his father, you know, would be proud of. It, you know, it, and it's just a changing goalpost. It's so frustrating at the end seeing her being turned against by, like, everybody. Oh, my God, I can't imagine, you know, at the end of the episode, like she is in like the worst place because then she also finds out, spoiler alert, that they are going to lure the Rosinante into, uh, you know, into range of the fleet. At that point, it doesn't have anything. To do, there's nothing she can do about it. And then she comes up with a very desperate plan um, that we see enacted in the final moments. Um, And what a, oh, I was like chills and stuff that yeah. that was you know, I had no idea what yeah, was happening. I, I was very much on the either. edge of my seat. I'm assuming she's going to be okay in the way that she will be alive and functional in some capacity. She'll probably be very hurt. Crazy space um, jump. Yeah. Yeah, no suit space that's, jump. That's pretty crazy. Um, okay, the drug, uh, that one gets a little, you know, where did she, you know, did she had full access to the ship. I guess she could find it. But but the rest of it played to me because Marco is such a narcissist that I feel like he can't even imagine her not being under his thumb. Like, he threatened her. Why would she even try anything again? Because this just, it shows his level of just insane confidence to a fault. Oh, yeah. I think the most emotional part of the entire episode, of a very emotional episode, was the conversation yeah, yeah. between Sin and Naomi, uh, the great Brent for Sexton, sure. who I will shout out uh, yeah. every time I can, yeah. and spoilers for the last time <laughs> for The Expanse, because yeah, yeah. uh, we lose him at the end because he reveals to Naomi he has been subverting her attempts at seeing her kid, and he right. feels horrible and redemption and all that and he goes to save naomi because he thinks she's going to suicide and as it turns out she's got a little bit of a plan and she says to him he still has love for her but he still made like a very hurtful decision and because he thought it was the right thing to do and it shows maybe the power of marco's uh charisma ability to spin a yarn in his own favor tragic it was a tragedy even at the end you know when when she's just getting you know emotionally and even physically abused by by marco and philip when he goes to her you know he says i i could have you know i could have changed his mind it's like no you couldn't man like there was it was too late for that he just he knew he he knew he couldn't stand up to marco and he felt like well maybe if i just had it you know i could talk to him now, a fool's now hope. the emotions are a fool's hope. exactly let's face it like she she killed him it was too late and he put himself into the position where like she she couldn't back out at that point like this was her one chance mm-hmm. he misread that moment because he had seen her contemplate suicide she was going to jump out the, the airlock his you know, guilt uh, like, earlier in that's life that's the tragedy yep, is his guilt, guilt. he ran yep. there because he felt yep. guilty didn't want her to do it Ooh. i think it shows that like you don't really know her anymore she's a different person right. and like you're the yes. type of person who follows marco and you still don't understand because she's yeah. the person yeah. who won't follow him and she's also the person who doesn't give up and who will fight for her family even philip he just doesn't know it yet you know yeah. it's powerful yeah. stuff i've i've really like you know i've always liked naomi but this season she's had some really powerful scenes and um they're yeah. really kind of hitting home to the heart of her character and uh, it's it's been very enjoyable they could still blow up that ship if they want to it's not like she's you know very far away at this point we're getting speculation time here but you know i wonder if philip will step in again and you know w- you know is would his dad try to destroy the ship so that she can't warn holden you know because his big fear is just that somebody would be able to find their coordinates like that's his big worry and that's the reason he let um the Zumea uh, get destroyed this week. This is your last chance or we will fire. He couldn't go help them because then, you know, um, 
Holden and the rest of the Rosinante crew would know where they are and they could get that that information maybe back out to those that could come help. You know, I mean, there's this weird calculated part, but there's also this side that like he clearly just wants to punish Naomi. You have to ask yourself, it's similar to, to you know, the weeks past. Is this the best strategic choice or is this just his passions kind of taking over and, and making a choice you know he's a sociopath or a narcissist at the very oh. least right yeah. and he loves the idea of himself being seen as this visionary revolutionary figure who changed everything he loves that and she's the only one who has said no to him and walked away and he oh. said you were the only one i've ever really loved or cared about and it's probably because she's the only one who's ever created some type of boundaries for him or whatever it is whatever sure. screwed up kind of reasoning he has in his mind but i mean he said you know I, you're the only one and you left the pain of losing philip was not as horrible as having to stay with you James Holden must be quite a man to keep a woman like you. She loves Holden because Holden's everything that Marco claims to be, you know, everything that he thinks he is. And you, know, we've seen, you know, four plus seasons now of, of Holden, yeah, doing the right thing, making tough choices. And, you know, what I loved in this episode where he's faced with this dilemma of, do I keep chasing the protomolecule or do I try to track Naomi? And he makes the choice to, to continue on and destroy the protomolecule because he knows that's what he has to do. I mean, it, to me, it wasn't some kind of like, oh, he's abandoned Naomi. It's he loves her so much but yet he also knows what the stakes are and, and what he needs to do. And to me, that's 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 an even more impressive love where you don't let that cloud the judgment that you have to make. Yeah. You would do what she would want you to do, which is th right. do the right. thing for the greater good. And that's who Naomi is. We've had some uh, kind of comments that have been speculating about where is uh, Marco getting the money from, where is the backing? There's a good back and forth about, you know, it's got to be Mars. It's got to be something with Mars because um, clearly Marco does not have the kind of finances to be able to buy literally entire Navy of Martian warships. It's speculation, you know, from, from Monica and Holden. It, to me, it kind of confirms exactly that. It's got to be much higher up the chain that somebody on Mars clearly, you know, wants the protomolecule, wants a scientist that can work with it you know that there's got to be a bigger plan in place and they feel like arming a terrorist is not consequential um in the greater scheme of things i assume that is going to lead us into season six again we are not book readers we are just enjoying this in a you know pure or television appreciating yes. kind of way so and we actually love all the book readers have been so like respectful to the experience of all the 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 show watchers and just kind of letting them have that that first time experience with the plot yeah i just thought it was funny that we did have people commenting about like how does marco even pay for any of this stuff and this right. episode specifically they're like he can't like, afford any of this <laughs> how is he it must be yeah. mars i mean they quite literally address those those comments i just kind of right. got a laugh out of that and thought that was super funny i love that the people commenting on our videos are like always at least a week ahead on their speculation they they're are. like wait a second though we're like got Ooh, yeah good point and then next week like they, they they definitely answer those questions so it's like hey the show the show knows the questions we're gonna ask for sure oh yeah they've they hey they know what they're doing here this is a tightly wound tail they got going on here and like i said the fast stuff is great the slow stuff is great uh, this was again an emotional teleplay that hits all the beats just right and and it's great i know things can't go on forever but i i think whoever's making this show should continue to go make big shows for yeah well whoever uh amazon netflix whoever. i don't care just get your hands on some hbo you guys keep running into some stinker good <laughs> showrunners why don't you get these guys they're great they know how to finish yeah. a thing clearly three more three more episodes for this season we'll have one more season we're in it for the long haul hopefully you guys join us next week like and subscribe if you enjoy our chatter and we will see you on the next one we will see you there